So hi everyone and welcome to this video on uh, the portfolio diversification effect, uh, which is part of our discussion on our module on the modern portfolio theory. So uh, in this particular video, we're going to, of course, discuss the relevance of the covariance and the correlation coefficient to the portfolio diversification effect, as well as show an actual example showing this particular diversification effect, especially when you start to increase the number of assets that are there. So recall that we have a portfolio uh, uh, that the correlation coefficient of a portfolio could be given as this one, which is rho ij which is equal to the covariance divided by the standard deviation of each uh, security or each asset. And it means that if that correlation coefficient is positive, it means that Ri and Rj, Rj move in the same direction. So if this one, uh, if this one uh, increases, Rj is also likely to increase, right? If they move in the same direction. Conversely, if the correlation coefficient is negative, then Rj tends, if, if Rj goes down, Ri is likely to go up. So they move in opposite directions. And uh, if rho Ij is equal to zero, then it means that uh, Ri is independent of Rj. So the, we have three unique cases in this particular uh, slide. We have one where in the, the rates of return move in the same direction. We have one wherein the um, rates move in opposite directions and one wherein, they're, wherein the rates are independent. Note that it's more likely that they move in the same direction if these, say, securities are in the same industry. For example, the technology stocks like Apple or uh, Google or like Amazon would tend to likely move in the same direction, barring some idiosyncratic shocks. But um, in general, you should expect a positive correlation coefficient of, uh, between them. But if you look at sectors that are quite unrelated, like for example, uh, cryptocurrency and say food, uh, relatively unrelated, well, you could see likely a zero or maybe even a negative correlation between these particular asset classes. So the diversification effect is essentially the reduction in the portfolio variance or the standard deviation or essentially our risk compared with a simple linear combination of the variances that comes from holding two or more assets held in a portfolio, provided that, that these assets' returns are not perfectly positively correlated. Essentially, this just means that um, the portfolio variance is likely going to be smaller than if I just took an average of the variance of uh, a weighted average of the variances of each uh, security inside of my portfolio. And that's because I have to account for the correlation coefficient and the covariance, which has and plays a role in particular in reducing the portfolio variance because of this diversification effect. Right? And that's a crucial concept in finance. So if rho ij is equal to positive one, remember uh, your rho uh, ij, uh, it's somewhere between uh, it's it could be it falls between positive one and negative one. Negative one is perfectly negative correlation, and a positive one is a perfectly positive correlation, which we have at least in this case. So that is R I and R J consistently move in the same direction. Now, the less positive the correlation coefficient is, or the more negative the correlation coefficient is the more the potential diversification benefit. So the more that these stocks move in generally opposite directions or the less positive it is, the greater the diversification benefit that can be obtained from combining security I and security J. And the size of the diversification effect uh, really depends on the degree of the correlation among the assets as returns. So in general, a lower correlation coefficient leads to a lower overall portfolio variance, not an individual variance, but an overall portfolio variance, and indeed a lower portfolio risk, right? Now, if we have a case that is rho uh, equal to negative one, then of course, as I alluded to earlier, we have a case of a perfectly negatively correlated uh, part, uh, uh, to uh, uh, perfectly negatively correlated returns, right? and that is both of the returns consistently move in opposite directions. And 
to be fair, this is generally desirable between securities as it has a great portfolio of risk reducing potential. And even in the case where security returns are totally uncorrelated, that's rho ij equal to zero, the portfolio variance can still be reduced by adding more securities to the portfolio, right? And generally, the more different the characteristics of the assets are, the greater the diversification effect. And that's what we will see in the example later on. Now, what's the effect of just merely increasing the number of assets in a portfolio? Well, in short, it also reduces the overall portfolio variance, uh, generally speaking. So we see that as more assets are held in a particular portfolio, the weight of each individual security decreases because you have to shoehorn another rate, uh, another rate of return inside. And of course, in order for you to include that asset, you would need to take the weight of uh, at least one of the assets away and put it to that new one. So the overall weight of each individual security likely decreases, which implies that the contribution of each individual asset's variance to the portfolio of variance will likely decrease as well. Next, correlations and therefore covariances prove far more important than just variances in determining the portfolio variance. So these things are actually crucial. It's not just the mean, it's not just the variance, but also the covariance that is important. And say we consider an equally weighted portfolio of N risky assets, then we can get the average variance as just this, and we can get or derive a portfolio variance measure equal to this formula here. We'll apply this later on. So if both of these uh, averages are bounded, then as the number of assets increase, the contribution to portfolio variance made by an individual asset will diminish and the portfolio variance will converge to the average variance. Thus, the diversification eliminates individual asset specific risk. And the risk that remains in the portfolio is that what uh, commonly affects all securities. So essentially, when you include more assets in a portfolio, you are taking away idiosyncratic risk, risk associated with a singular asset class or a singular asset. Like for example, say that uh, your portfolio was just composed of Apple and say, uh, say Tesla, and then your weighting was like um, 0 0.75 and 0 0.25. If Apple had a bad earnings day, their stock would likely fall. And your entire wealth will be really affected because 75% of your holding in the portfolio is on Apple. But when you add another stock, say uh, Chevron, right? Chevron, say you add that, you would need to take at least uh, some part of Apple or Tesla or both to uh, put a share in Chevron. So for example, I took away 5% um, from Tesla and I took away uh, say 20% um, 20, uh, 20 from Apple. So, uh, so that's 0 0.25. So say we have that there. So if say Apple reports a bad earnings call, their stock will go down, but it, uh, your entire portfolio wouldn't be as affected because uh, your holding in Apple is now smaller than before. So the risk is also effectively smaller than before. And that is the benefit of the diversification effect. It generally eliminates individual asset specific risk, the more assets are included in your portfolio. So we have a graph here that explains that. So when you have a low number of assets here, say N1, you have a lot of unique risk that is present. But when you have a larger number, say N2, then the unique risk is now smaller. And when you keep on going to N, it's going to be effectively just a market risk, right? So that's uh, what you're going to have there, right? Now, let's have an example to calculate. So uh, we're asked here to compare the portfolio variance and standard deviation if we have here four cases. Okay, so let's answer the first one. The first one is very simple. Um, if the uh, entire investable wealth uh, is concentrated on asset two, well, if the entire investable wealth is concentrated on uh, asset two, then uh, sigma p is just going to be equal to 20%, right? 
right? So that's gonna be your risk for that. And that's if you allocate 100% for asset two, nothing for asset one. So next one is, uh, so that's done with scenario one, quite simple. Say you now have a scenario two. Scenario two now posits some additional consideration. So uh, let, let's do this in another uh, slide. So let, let's uh, first write on the table. So we have two assets, right? So assets one and then two. Then we have mu i, 17%. Same example as the last video, 12%. Sigma i is uh, 30%. Then we have your 20%. And then your variance is just the uh, square of that. That's just 900% squared. And you have um, uh, here, you have 400% squared. Then remember your sigma i j is 240% squared. Right? So you have those information there. So uh, we have a case here, which is case two is asking if row one two is equal to 0.4 and your allocation is 0 0.15, 0 0.75. So if, uh, if row one two is equal to 0.4, allocation is uh, x1 is equal to 0.25 x2 is equal to 0.75. So we can calculate for uh, the portfolio variance uh, in this particular case, right? Uh, so the uh, sigma ij, remember that's uh, in our example before, but of course we now have a, uh, uh, that still holds true for us because remember in the last video, our row one two is equal to 0.4. So sigma ij is just uh, equal to, so just recall the formula x1 squared sigma 1 squared plus x2 squared sigma 2 squared plus 2 uh, x1 x2 rho 1 2 uh, sigma 1 sigma 2. So that's the formula that uh, we, we will follow. And uh, you note that this part, uh, rho, at least in this example, rho 1 2 sigma 1 sigma 2, that's equal to 0.4 times point uh, times uh sorry 30 percent times a uh, 20 percent right which is equal to 240 percent right so uh percent squared rather which is that uh, what we had in the last video so our sigma ij okay will just essential uh, i'm sorry our sig uh um this is not sigma ij this is the portfolio variance sigma p squared right sigma p squared uh, will just be equal to this one, which is x1 squared. You have 0.25 squared times 900% uh, squared plus you have four, uh, whoops, you have um, 0.75 squared times 400% uh, squared uh, plus Two times 0 0.75, 0 0.25 times 240 percent squared, right? And you're gonna be left with uh, 371 percent squared. That's gonna be your portfolio variance, and your portfolio standard deviation, at least, uh, is gonna be the square root of that, and that's gonna be square root of 371 percent squared, which is zero, uh, which is 19 sorry, 19.27%, right? So that's what you have there. Next one, um, uh, say, so that's th that for this one. Say now our uh, correlation coefficient is zero. So remember our lecture, uh, the more negative it is, the generally we expect a lower risk, right? Because uh, that's the gain from diversification. So um, if, uh, so let's use pink for this. If row one, two is equal to zero, x1 is equal to 0.25, x2 is equal to 0 0.75, right? So if you have that, sigma one, two, which is our covariance, is just going to be equal to row one, two, sigma one, sigma two. Row one, two in this case is zero times uh, sigma one, that's 30% then sigma two, that's 20%. And that's just gonna be zero because right, we have a zero there. So our portfolio variance in this case is just gonna be, um, we have 0.25 squared, 900% squared, 
plus 0.75 squared times uh, 400 percent squared plus 2 times 0 0.75 0 0.25 times 0. So we have here nothing there. We're just left with this and that's just going to end up being uh, 281.25 percent squared. And if you want to get the uh, standard deviation that's just square root of 281.25 percent squared, that's going to be equal to 16.77%. Uh, and already you can see a gain from diversification from 19 because the correlation coefficient went down to zero from 0.4, we were able to see a reduction in risk, right? So from 19 became 16. Now we're gonna see an even greater reduction when we get to negative, our last case, which is negative 0.4. So um, let me use green for this one. So if, if uh, rho 1, 2 is equal to negative 0 0.4, x1 is 0.25, x2 is 0.75, right? So you're going to have uh, sigma 1, 2, which is, again, rho 1, 2, sigma 1, sigma 2. That's negative 0 0.4 times 30% times 20%, and of course you get negative 240% squared. Next, calculate for the portfolio variance. That's gonna be 0 0.25 squared, 900% squared plus 0 0.75 squared, 400% squared plus two times 0 0.75, 0 0.25 times negative 240, percent squared and that will be equal to 191.25 percent squared last step is to just take the square root of that so that's your portfolio variance take the square root of that and you're going to be left with uh, percent squared that's going to be equal to 13.83 percent so as you can see, as the correlation coefficient goes further and further negative, as we further and further decline the correlation coefficient, the portfolio's uh, risk or standard deviation keeps on going down, which is, again, a representation of your diversification effect. So that's it for this video. Thank you for your attention. In the next video, we're going to discuss the investment opportunity set. Quite an interesting topic. So thank you once again and see you in the next video. Thank you very much.